and welcome to Horror Boys. It's a podcast on the internet. I'm Austin, joined as always by Chris and Isaiah, and we are the Horror Boys. And Horror Boys, yeah. it's not just any podcast. It is a horror movie review podcast where every week we review a horror movie. And right now, we're reviewing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. So, today, I'm um, uh, quotes, oh, putting one in quote. the well, franchise part of it? It doesn't, like, go in order. I guess that doesn't disqualify from being a franchise, yeah. but it's it's unlike any other franchise we've, we've reviewed. That's fair. In that That's, regard. Um, it is one of the least connected franchises, maybe, in horror. Rivaled only by the Halloween franchise, but even they are a little bit more connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, today we are talking about the third movie in the franchise. That's right, we're talking about Leatherface, colon, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Which is directed by uh, Jeff Burr. Uh, The studio, New Line, by the way, this is a New Line movie, this one. Only this one, because this franchise gets thrown around all over the place, from my understanding. Mm. (laughs) But this time it was it was produced by New Line, and they wanted Peter Jackson, but he said no. So we got Jeff Burr, who mm. he's Jeff Burr. I believe yeah. at this point he the reason they chose him as like their backup was because he apparently just did the uh, Stepfather sequel. It's a Stepfather. Yeah, the Stepfather. It's a horror movie, and then there's a sequel oh, okay. called The Stepfather Two, oh. mm. and sure. yeah. Um, and this guy directed that. Um, and it's also written by David J. Scow, who later goes on to write The Crow, so that's pretty cool. Um, as well as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning, the sixth movie in the franchise that is a prequel to the reboot. <laughs> exactly where you want to start, you know, your, your beginning. Yeah. The sixth movie in. You understand. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I think that's the last of the like behind the scenes people I'll mention here. I'll mention some of the other ones. Oh, I'll mention this one here just because I don't know when else I'd bring it up. But uh, something I noticed while watching the credits is um, the stunt coordinator for this movie is Kane Hodder, who we yeah. love Kane Hodder here on this podcast. This is a uh, Kane Hodder simp podcast. Um, and no. we do have some fire stunts in true to Kane Hodder form. Yeah, so that is true. <laughs> yep, yours truly, aspiring Kane Hodder, going to be Hodder- tossed, tossed through windows. And on fire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on fire while it be tossed through windows. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, Kane Hodder, he's cool. I don't know if he did what he did really in this movie that was cool, but, you know, I can't, no, there was a fire stunt. It's about the only stunt that I would say stood out, but, you know. Hey, I like Kane Hodder, so I'm glad he got a paycheck. <laughs> that's that's the way to put it. Basically, yeah. Um, we get a opening crawl that just says, "Hey, that last movie, it did not happen. Not at all. Remember mm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre two? Well, don't. <laughs> the you only would thing that... you did not remember the last movie yeah. at all. The, actually, the only thing that matters from that movie." was the line, the saw is family. Everything else, throw it away. (sighs) We will not follow the continuity of that movie in any way because in this opening crawl, we say that um, Drayton Sawyer, who is now renamed W.E. Sawyer, uh, died in prison, like, immediately. As well as uh, Sally Hardesty dies, which also later will be retconned away. So... That. Real quick. Yes. What does retcon mean? Uh, it's like where you change the continuity. So you read. I guess. Yeah, I you read continuity. Like you basically like, hey, this, <laughs> even though this happened at one point, eh, we don't care anymore. Here's the new continuity. Well, I guess we'll get to it, but they also trash, it seems, a bit of the first movie as well, but. Are, are we inferring that W.E. Sawyer is Drayton okay. simply because he doesn't show up in this one? Or um, 
I would base off of the, that opening crawl implies that, at least in the opening crawl, maybe there's later parts where they ignore their own continuity that they're saying. They said in the opening crawl that the first movie happened and only one survivor was found, not Leatherface. And there were only three members of the family and we saw the hitchhiker die. So he's the only person left to have been found. I guess that makes sense. It seems to imply that, like, whoever it was would have resembled Leatherface. It's like, oh, it's an alternate personality. Mm -hmm. But I guess your explanation makes a lot more sense. I also so. think that the fact is they were explaining, at least, once again, it's from the crawl that literally go comes up and goes away. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think the implication also is that they just thought Sally was crazy and that Leatherface never existed at all. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. sure, it's, his, it's, it's an alternate personality yeah. for him because no one else saw Leatherface. So Leatherface could have been Drayton in a outfit, I guess, to these cops okay. who have no proof that Leatherface existed. All right. That makes a lot more sense yeah. than what I have. And also, I definitely also think it might have... Might, the one thing that connects him to the name W. Story would be the name of the gas station in the first movie is, you know... It's like... Dub, it's because it's the joke is like we, like we cook or we slaughter or something. We slaughter, yeah. yeah. it's W.E. Uh -huh. slaughter. So, like, maybe that's... The, so, maybe it's oh, his okay. thing, I guess. Once again... It's for the opening crawl to just base basically the point of the opening crawl is saying, "Hey, here's last movie really happen. what happened after the first <laughs> movie. The second movie definitely doesn't matter." That gaudy we're about garbage. to tell a completely yeah. different story. Yeah. Uh, so that we can have this movie exist and not be a yeah. problem. Yeah. I mean, I feel like even in the horror movie world, they could have found some sort of way to say that Leatherface survived. Especially considering we're killing off every other character. They could have had this be after that, but they said, nah, it didn't. <laughs> I feel like there was a way. Like, we've seen Jason die a thousand times. Hey, okay, so Leatherface didn't actually die. That's fine. Somehow he got away from the grenade. And somehow uh, lived from his chainsaw wound. I mean, yeah. you're right. Nah, he would have had to come back from the dead like Jason and yeah. have a weird Jason-esque I'm a zombie now thing going That's on. The thing is, like, Jason Burp did that like movie one. So I don't know. I don't, I'm fine with it. I really don't. It's I love to, but if this movie wants to say it doesn't matter, I got to get used to that because that's this franchise from my understanding. is Nothing you know, matters. Just nothing before matters. Maybe the first movie matters. Maybe. It this matters. is the real story of yeah. what happened yeah. after the first movie <laughs> yeah. for the next six movies. For the next this movie. And then no, yeah. really. I believe so. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we get that opening crawl, and then following that, um, we get uh, a kill. Um, wait, no, wrong thing. Yeah, we do. We get like a hammer swung to the face of a, in the movie at least, unnamed person. I think they have a name maybe in the credits, but there's a girl. She gets hit with a hammer. It's by our boy Leatherface. Um, and it's ha this is kind of happening during the credits, and he kills her. Um, this movie's Leatherface is played by R. A. Milhe Mihailov. Mihailov, maybe sure. Um, I'm just call him Leatherface going forward. But he's he is a you know alumni of our podcast in the sense of we have talked about him before because he was in Hatchet Two. He was the he was the Leatherface actor who got to fight Jason in that movie that. I was really excited to see happen. So, oh, the guy with the yeah, the, the kind of the the bulkier yeah. guy with the big beard. That's this ver this Leatherface is that guy. So that's cool. Oh, that's cool. cool. He plays Trent, I believe, in that movie. I believe is the character's mm -hmm. name, if I remember right. Hey, Trent. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then yeah, we see the hammer hit the girl. And we cut. Um, yeah, we cut to a very terrible title card, like mid her like getting killed. That oh god! Is, yeah, the sound effects on the title yeah. card are just the worst. It's also um, kind of a drippy blood-looking font that, for some reason, they chose to make white, which does not give off blood vibes. It gives off a different viscous white liquid vibes, which I feel like is a weird choice for the title card of your movie. Uh, <laughs> just, just this saying. It's gonna be a scary movie, guys. Mm -hmm. It, it feels like a choice. To not like could have done that in red, then like the title under it of Texas Chainsaw Massacre three in, you know, red white if they really wanted to use white in the logo. But no, 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 Leatherface had to be white for the title card, which, but it was drippy blood font, which just doesn't look well. Good, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it, I'm just sorry. I just can't. It was a choice they made. What's the what is it in the earlier opening scene? The adipose or acidipose? Oh, the, oh. Creamy bodily fluids. Yeah. The creamy body fat. 
that happens when it's uh, broken down and dap- uh, wet. Adipocere or dap? A- it's A D I P O C R E. Yeah, it's um fancy word that we will come back in the plot later in like a scene or two. But let's get through these credits, which because as these credits keep going, we get also some actually I think some really kind of cool shots in the credits of um Leatherface like sewing together a skin mask and like cutting it up, which I thought was like hey that's cool. It's kind of like a yeah. Freddy esque making his glove from you know Nightmare on Elm Street, but for the Leatherface mask and hey, I thought it was. We've seen worse credits as we've watched some horror movies. So, well, that is something I did like about this movie is we get. I mean, it's not a wealth of material, but I I want to say more footage than previous movies showing Leatherface on his own, which helps us connect to him a little bit more. I think not not enough to make him like the main character, but. I think more so than in previous movies, seeing him doing his little lesson with the clown and everything, and in this case with the mask. It's fair. A little more sympathy is built, I think. I also feel like we'll get we'll get to it when we get more to it, but like I just also feel like Leatherface. I kind of also I agree with what you're saying. Like we do maybe get a couple more scenes with him, but I also feel like this is one of the worst portrayals of Leatherface, with like no real character given to him. Like the other ones, like movie two, he was like. You know, in love with Stretch, there was a story. I don't know. I just I felt like he was yeah. kind of a monster for the most of this movie, which I guess fine, but that hasn't been what Leatherface had been before. He had more, slightly more depth in the other movies, but yes, he is more like large and in oh. charge. He does have cool, you know, weird speaking spell scene. We will get we that. Go, oh yeah, I love that scene. We'll get to that scene when we get. We got. We're, it, dumb like a kid <laughs> yeah i don't know i just yeah i i don't love the portrayal of leatherface but i don't hate it either uh, <laughs> but yeah um read that already all right um then leatherface he hears a noise it um i couldn't tell who it was the first time i watched this movie but i did watch the movie again with my dad um in this first scene we do see uh it's the, the crazy girl we see later um, the crazy survivor girl is at the window and she like steps on a branch and Leatherface hears it. So he gets up and we recreate the sliding door scene, baby. Because this movie loves to just redo things, but not quite as well. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's he... an accurate summary. Hmm? That's an accurate summary. Yeah. Uh, I was so just agreeing he... with you, Ben. Yeah, he, re- he slams the door again because it's what he does. <laughs> and then we uh, cut away from them, and we meet Michelle and Ryan. Uh, Michelle, who is played by Kate Hodge, who I don't have any really other information other than that's her name. But Ryan... Kate Hodge. <laughs> yeah, her name is Kate Hodge. Uh, good for her. Uh, <laughs> but Ryan is played by uh, William Butler, who goes on to write some full moon films, which I thought was funny. Like He goes on to write The Ginger Dead Man. Um, he is that the writer is of that movie later. <laughs> so incredibly fitting because his acting is befitting of full moon features. Aww. It feels like. Mm. He seems Flatter. like a really I've... nice guy in the documentary <laughs> I watched. So I'm not. I'm gonna try not to be too mean on him, but I don't love his acting in this movie. <laughs> That's fair. Um, but also, la- last kind of fun thing is we've actually full moon features. It's fun to mention those because you know some crappy B movies, but also. He was in a really successful B movie, <laughs> that is Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven. Um, yeah, he is uh, the guy whose like party is happening that doesn't ever make it to his party. He's the guy who gets killed by a tent spike thrown at him. Oh, yeah. So yeah, okay. He's back from that, and spoiler: he's not the only Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven alumni we have in this movie. Well, I'll let you know who the other one is when we get to their scene much later. <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, we meet Michelle and Ryan, who are on a trip across the country from California to Florida, I believe. Um, and uh, they're in a relationship, but it's rocky because she's about to like go study abroad, and he's it's just he's also he's a jerk, so. <laughs> Yeah, major <laughs> douche. Yes, yeah. he is just a butthole through and through. <clears throat> yeah. Um. But yeah. So uh, there's a pretty prolonged scene of them just kind of like bickering. Uh, 
before they uh, pass a crime scene where we hear the flashbulb sound effect during an actual like camera going off for once, which is nice. Yeah, because it is a crime scene investigation. Yeah. Um, and where we hear... Did I read that? Uh, and then also some guys in hazmat suits uh, go through some body parts covered in a white goo that we do find out later is known as... I'll let Chris try to pronounce it because I don't want to butcher it again. Uh... Is it uh, adiposer? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So um, then, Mister that yeah, Mister and Mister Premed Ryan tells us that she calls him Mister Premed when he says it, which I thought was just like, it's like he's supposed to be your boyfriend, but she's like just being mean to him when he knows the answer. It's like Dude, yeah. he knows a science like, factor. Oh, a toxic good. relationship. Like, here's the thing: he has a lot of flaws. Him knowing a science fact isn't a flaw, but she treats it like a <laughs> <Idiot>. flaw. <laughs> We get it. You're pre-med. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does call them idiots, like, in That's a very true. condescending way. That is... He's back just, with Rouge. These are just two toxic people in a relationship. Yeah. They really are. Um, Next to some physically toxic people. <laughs> in the yeah. Nice. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. All right. That's the podcast. Uh, we can, we're not going to top that. The end? <laughs> High note? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, Bow on that. Uh, but yeah, they talk to a cop who tells Michelle and Ryan to move along and not stop or talk to anyone. Um, which we cut to the next morning where they immediately stop. Stop it. Because, well, first they run over an armadillo. Um, yeah, which is what makes them it. stop. They don't talk to anyone yet, but they do run over an armadillo and stop. And very important later. I, one thing I will say with this movie is it does some really good calling back to scenes before. They, they set up a lot of things that they actually, I feel like, do a decent job paying off later. Um, in this scene, she does not have it in her to put this twitching armadillo out of its misery. So Ryan has to kill it for her. And then they leave the armadillo. But, you know, she picks up that big rock to smash its head, but can't. I wonder yeah. if that's important. That is good foreshadowing. Yeah. And there's she a couple other, say, like... Sorry, little buddy. Yeah. And then Ryan's like, nah, I got this. Yeah. Additionally, um... I noticed a silver object by the armadillo's ear that I noticed later in the movie, and then eventually the first time we see something that looks like it clearly is the little silver-coated skull earring on one of the murderers. Is one of the see brothers. This as well? Tink? Yeah. Yeah. Hook yeah. On the armadillo? Hook Am I imagining this? I don't remember. I, I, you might be, but you might not be. I didn't pay that close attention to the armadillo. <laughs> I remember thinking, like, does the armadillo have an earring? And... I think it might have, which would imply that they, like, put it there as a trap, but it was alive, so it, it opens up uh, other fan theories about trained armadillos in, in the hands of killers, but that's not important. Trained armadillos in the hands of killers. Yeah. Uh, I like your fan theory. Had that conversation. I don't know if your fan theory is accurate, but I do like it. Uh- <laughs> I'm going to entertain it, yeah. Um, um then... Ryan has to already that. Uh, then they uh, then we cut away from them for a little bit, where we meet a hitchhiker who we later find out is named Tex, who is you know, he's played by Viggo Mortensen, um, which is crazy. Mister Lord of the Rings. Yes, Mister. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Aragorn, I believe, right? Aragorn. Yeah. yeah. A very different character here. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> The classic, you know, horror movie thing that where you know you get an actor who is not a star yet, but becomes at least somewhat of a star. I mean, the man was in multiple, I believe, Oscar award-winning movies, so that's pretty cool. But first, yeah. he was in this, which did not win an Oscar for some reason. <laughs> Dude, an injustice, really, yeah. really an overlooked, a hidden gem, if you will. Um, but yeah, yeah. so. He arrives at the last chance gas station. Ooh. Oh. And then so do um our our other characters of you know Ryan and our protagonists? Yeah. Question mark. I mean, she's our protagonist. <laughs> I don't know how is... Our protagonist doesn't show up for like another fifteen minutes. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Leatherface. Uh, <laughs> no. okay. uh, but yeah, so they're at the gas station, and we meet this uh, 
creepy uh, gas station attendant who we do later find out his name is Alfredo. Um, I believe, for the most part, my notes are going to refer to him as, like, the attendant. I'll try to remember to say Alfredo when we come through it, but we don't get his name till like, the end of the movie. He showed his little name tag. Is it? Oh, my bad. You know what? I wasn't paying attention to all the details. I'm sorry. Um, fire me. In my opinion, I, I should, but you can only fire you. That's true. Unfortunately. I feel like this is our best crazy guy that we've seen in this series so far. I He's know. actually really convincing, in my opinion. Wait, what were you going to say? I will hard him? disagree. I like, I oh. do, I do like uh, Tom Everett here portraying Alfredo. But I, I, as stated last week, I absolutely loved Bill Mosley's performance as Chop Top. So I do personally disagree. I don't hate that you have that opinion. Like, there's sometimes where you've had opinions where I hate, because that's we all do that. When you really have strong opinions, you sometimes hate other people's opinions. I don't hate this one, but I don't agree. <laughs> You're right. I, I don't want to say it's apples and oranges. Bill Mosley was certainly an eye catcher. Like, he was a show stealer. I work in downtown Austin every day, mm-hmm. and I talk to and see and pass so many people that are, you know, on the down on their luck or on drugs, or whatnot, have mental problems, and they sound like, this is the, like, he captures the voice perfectly of real people with actual mental problems that, are like, I heard this, I'm like, wow, that's actually really convincing. It's this fair. sounds like real people that I see every day. So. But that's different than Bill Mosey just being, like, something, not quite a clown, He's but, like, like... a cartoon character. Yes. Like caricature. Yeah. Like this huge caricature, yeah. Both fun to watch. Um, but yeah, the Alfredo, he tries to sell a picture to her, because once again, we have to do things that the other movies already did. Just yeah. Do it again. But I will say, for something like this scene compared to the last movie's dinner scene, the last movie's dinner scene made me angry because of how not as good as it was. I do agree that I actually really like Tom Everett's work here, so I don't... I didn't hate him doing some of the same lines. I was like, okay. I was like, all right, I like him. Because he also, you know, he changed up a little bit. He tried to give her a discount. So it's completely different. You know? Yeah. yeah. Giving her an honest deal. Yeah, he, he realized his picture wasn't worth $5. It's worth, you know, three sixty eight or whatever. Yeah. three sixty nine. Was it three sixty nine? dollars bad. Yeah, it was a funny number. I remember. <laughs> it was a funny number. That's the what funny. funny that's the funny harmonica yeah. number. Ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Let's go. But yeah, then Tech stops him from creeping on her. There doesn't let her because after he tries to sell her the picture and she says no, she's like, N- just give us gas. He gets like really creepy with the way he like ref- refers to how he's going to like service her and whatnot. Um. So yeah, Tex Tex comes in. He saves the day. He's like, nah, you stop that. Which, you know, just makes him a little angry. But, you know, he kind of storms off from him at this point. That's all that happens. Um, and then Tex kind of, like, while this is happening, after this, he, like, asks him, like, hey, can I get a ride? Because, you know, he's the hitchhiker in this movie. But he's a, a good hitchhiker, it seems, right now? He's not. But right now, it seems like he is. <laughs> he is, at the very least, an endearing. That is another thing I will say about this movie just from the stars, the new Sawyer family here, all of them are flawed, obviously. They're murderers, and, like, also typically all have something else about them that makes them bad, too. Yeah. They love each other, at least, which was kind of nice to see for, you know, the family, at least. Like, the family dynamic of it. Like, they actually felt like a family. Like, they were a family of monsters, but, you know, they didn't treat each other bad, at least. They, you know, respect each other. (laughs) Except That's for a really Alfredo. good point, actually. Except for yeah. Alfredo. We they all were, hate Alfredo, because he's a creep. We'll treat him monsters bad. that loved each other. Yeah. But you know... Yeah. It's not like the utter chaos of the first one. Yeah. I guess that would have been something more apropos to bring up later when we meet more of this family, but I brought it up here because the thought came to my mind. Uh- <laughs> You're ruining the whole flow of the podcast. I'm sorry. Goodness. Let's just, you know, start over. We'll start from the beginning... Oh, no. Hello! Yeah, and welcome know, to... It's good. <laughs> oh, okay. Everything's, everything's good. Uh, flow is still great. 
Uh, but yeah, so Tex asks for a ride, um, but Ryan says no because they're in a hurt. They like they're on trying to make a schedule, and you know Michelle is a little, just maybe a little smitten. So she says, uh, "I will talk about it." <laughs> she's amenable to she the idea. Immediately, yeah. Ryan is trying to be like no, and she's like, "I don't know, maybe." He's uh, kinda, yeah. He did. He did. While <laughs> while Ryan was in the bathroom, he did. You know, say that give her a nice compliment. While he's, you know, taking the message. Somehow he was able to be charming while literally picking roadkill off of her car. And he talks about how, you know, like, if I, if you were the last thing I saw before I died, I'd die happy. And it's like, okay. But it worked because she's definitely, it got her smitten a little bit. She's like, oh, maybe we will give this guy a ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can ride my chariot into Mordor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One doesn't simply walk there. Yet. That is true. Uh, that is true. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Um, but yeah, so at this point, she has to go to the bathroom, though. So she goes to the bathroom where the creepy attendant, Alfredo, is spying on her through a peephole. Um, while this happened, Tex is telling Ryan about a shortcut to Houston. But Ryan still says that, you know, they can't help him. Because at the end of it, he's like, hey, you know, see, I helped you. Let me, you know, give me a ride, please. And Ryan's like, no. Which, to be fair, is fair. Like, I don't really, even at this point, when we're no, not supposed to know if Tex is bad or good, I don't feel sympathy for the guy. Like, like there's an element of, like, no, no, hitchhikers can be really creepy. I, I, I get saying no. Like, <laughs> yeah. you don't know this person. The right thing to do is say no. <laughs> yeah. That's the, if anything, if you want to learn anything from this podcast, it's say no to hitchhikers. Um, that's my new campaign slogan. Um, I am running for uh, highway California patrolman. Governor? Uh, oh. What? <laughs> a highway comp troller, Austin, I think is what you mean? No, no, I'm running to be a cop on the highway. It's just, it's not, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to get oh, the okay. job. I didn't go to the police academy. Mm, fair which is not a horror franchise. I'm sorry. All the fans who've been demanding us cover the Police Academy films, we can't. I'm sorry. Uh, that implied that we have fans. Awesome. My dad, he just won't stop talking about it. Uh, <laughs> did your dad actually ask us no, to cover the Police Academy? No, my dad has okay. not asked us to talk about the Police Academy films. <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever asked anyone to cover the Police Academy films for anything. I don't know. That's that probably is. not true. There There's a fa- lot of podcasts out I there. I would <laughs> say if we had a regular movie podcast, I could see people wanting us to cover that franchise because people do like that franchise. But mm. it's not a horror film, so we will get back to the plot. This bit has derailed the podcast a bit. I'm sorry. I was not trying to find... It's supposed to be a silly joke, but you guys took it too seriously. Um, that was a joke? <laughs> This is a comedy podcast. That's why I click on YouTube. So oh, This okay. is a comedy podcast. Yeah. And don't you forget it. Um, but yeah. Then um, Tex goes and stops uh, Alfredo from staring. Um, then at gunpoint, uh, Ryan and Michelle escape with um, a gunshot going through the back of their car. And Ryan sees Tex get shot. Bum, bum, Maybe. Bum. Or get dusted, as he, he says. Gets dusted. Yeah. Ooh. And decorously. The cowboy! <laughs> cowboy got dusted. Um, and then, because they're scared, I guess, they decide to go down Texas route. Not tec- the Texas. Tex. The route that Tex gave them. Entitled 1973. Fit, uh, funnily enough. Oh. So, How? Yeah. How apropos of the first movie. There we go. Wow. How apropos, sir. Oh. How out of uh, ap- Then we see a truck leave the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> but Alfredo is not in it because he's running around screaming and shooting his gun, screaming about how the trap has been set. Who's in the yeah. truck? Who is in the truck? Pump bump. Indeed. You think at this point, if you've you might think at this point, is it Tex? You have to wait and see. It's not. It's not Tex. It's not, it's not, Tex. Tex. It's not Tex. You don't have to wait and see, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. 
It's not technically. That's why you tune into this podcast, so you yeah. don't have to wait and see. Yeah. You don't have to watch yeah. this movie. Um, if you don't want it. It's up to you, you know. Uh, we cut back to the arguing couple who are being chased by the truck. They're arguing, because that's what you do. Um, there's some great line delivery by Ryan in this scene. Definitely A-plus stuff. Some of the best line delivery I've ever seen is not weirdly stunted and said weird at all. Well, uh, I don't even know why you'd bring that up. Yeah, it's just because so it, so, it was just so good. I had to bring it up. It was the, the oh, okay. best line delivery I've ever heard. Yeah. They then have um, a coyote thrown at them, and it hits their car. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as I guess they swerve around because of the coyote, they also get a flat tire. So mm-hmm. they have to get out and change said tire. Um. I can't tell what that's supposed to say. Oh, there it was. I skipped a line. And that's why I couldn't see. <clears throat> then we have a person watching from afar who has a their leg in some sort of uh, brace. Who could this be? Well, in like the next shot, we find out it's Leatherface with a chainsaw. Yeah. Which, I actually kind of like that detail about it because it's like, that is like directly referencing the first movie where he like gets the chainsaw dropped on his leg. Now his leg is messed up. Oh. Like, Dude, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I respect oh. that. Are you just now getting that idea? Dude, if y'all haven't learned already, I, I just now get a lot of things when y'all bring them up. The, the weird thing you is, got, Isaiah got, will... Yeah, the, the armadillo with the earring and not <laughs> the brace on their faces, like... Y- y'all don't even know, like, how much I've had to change about the opinion I think I'm going to say at the end by the time we get there, because I learned how much of what I saw, it just is flatly wrong i just i i I don't i hate to double down what chris said but like isaiah will notice (laughs) some small details but then not the bigger details sometimes it's like Mm. he'll be like did you see that the road sign was 1973 i'm like well that's a really cool easter egg oh that's why he had a was his leg in a brace (laughs) forest and trees scenario you know um, so yeah, uh, Leatherface comes over and he starts just chainsawing the car, but it won't, the car won't start, so they're not able to get away for a little bit, but it finally does start. This is just some, you know, tension for the sake of tension, which is fine. I'm not, like, I'm not diminishing its place in the movie, I'm more just moving on as I read the notes. I realized that was a dismissive way of saying it. It's just tension for the sake of tension, let's move on. No, I mean, it's, there's some tension here. Um, mm-hmm. and then the car starts... Um, and they start to go away, um, and they actually, first, before they get to go away, though, they, uh, back up into Leatherface, knocking him over, and then I don't remember exactly what line he says, but Ryan says something about maybe, like, oh, we hit him in a way that, like, gives off, like, troll to, uh, level line delivery, oh like, it's, yeah. it's, it's some bad stuff. It doesn't, it also doesn't, it helps the feeling like Troll 2, which I guess could you say hurts his line delivery is, the guy kind of also looks like the guy from Troll looks 2. Looks a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> they are similar yeah. looking people. Uh, kind of nerdier Striking blonde guys person. with glasses. Like, there's some similar vibes. So, it... Like, the almost exact same hairdo. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we cut away and meet a Jeep driver, who we find out later is named Benny, who is played by... Ken Foray, who I believe most famously was in um, uh, Dawn of the Dead. He is, like, the star of that movie. And here he's just the jaunty Jeep driver. And, and here he him. is also the star he's of the movie. also basically the star of the There's movie. There's also that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and both yeah. him and Michelle uh, veer off the road and crash because they're trying not to hit Tex, who's in the middle of the road. But it's also, uh, like, cut to crap. And like really shot like edited so bad badly like it doesn't it like the them crashing like it's like it's there's some cool like car crashes that they filmed obviously but like just the editing to get there it's like you can't even tell that they were on the same road before we cut to them both crashing it was just it was weirdly done. Okay, yeah. I was wondering if I was just watching a particularly edited version. Um. <laughs> Did y'all find, like, overall y'all's versions cut to crap as well? I mean, like, 
cutting away before particular kills, anything yeah, like that. Yeah, no, the, that is the that's the rated R version of the movie, which is what we also watched. Is just for whatever it's it's the classic late eighties, early nineties. Uh, MPAA just screws over horror movies. Like, it's okay. Friday the 13th, uh, Part 7. We talked about, like, that movie has some great kills that you never see. Um, this is a very similar situation, and it's, I'd argue, think maybe just as much of a shame as that one is um, the makeup artist for this movie was uh, Greg Nicotero who, and his uh, studio, uh, KNBFX, which he's the N for KNB, I believe the KNB also are people who matter in the makeup effects world. I didn't write down their names because I didn't know their names. But uh, Greg Nicotero's name I know because he's, like, producer of The Walking Dead as well as done a lot of effects on that. Like, he's a guy who's been involved in horror for forever and still relatively relevant in the general horror world up until recently. So, Okay. All right. He is another one of those big names when it comes to horror effects. And it's a shame because of the makeup effects we actually got to really see that he did, I guess we have, like, Leatherface's new mask. And that's about it. Like... Pretty yeah. much all of the rest of his work was basically just cut out of this movie, and I'm not going to hold that. I, I I don't. I'm not going to hold that against the movie personally because there is an element of I understand that that wasn't the creator's intention. Like, yes, I wish I would have saw the more violent movie. I wish I would have saw their original concept, which doesn't exist at all. There is an unrated version. I heard about that after watching it. That I don't think is available digitally, but it's on Blu-ray, and that version has more blood. And a little bit more gore, but it's still not even what they really wanted. They wanted to, like, go all out, but, yeah, it is a shame. Um, but, yeah, this movie is kind of, the MPAA cuts it to crap. And I don't, I doubt this scene was because of the MPAA. I think this might have just been bad editing, because I don't know what they would have cut out in this scene that the MPAA would have cared about. Uh, but, but, yeah. The car crashes they, like, violent. But they show Dude, the car crashes. Yeah. They still show the, like, cars tumbling. <laughs> Yeah, they sure do. They just don't show, like, an establishing shot of them on the same road. Quite possibly because they never were on the same road and they had to just edit it together to make it feel like it was. Which is fair. It happens. I'm not... But I will also... It, it's fair, but I will point out that it felt kind of weird that these cars just both crashed when you're like, are yes. they even near each other? But... Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> if they were, we definitely never saw that. Yeah. Um, Did it, like, swerve to avoid each other? No? No. Oh, oh, we're... We're being told that they crashed. Okay. So. I understand. Yeah. That um, is one thing I understand. Then Benny helps uh, get some medical attention to Ryan and Michelle. He gives them both some painkillers, which do end up causing both of them to get kind of groggy. And you kind of, for a moment, wonder, like, is he also bad? Is he drugging these people? He's not. But it does, you know, you, there's a moment where you're like, he's like... Is he roofing these people to, like, help the the bad guys? Yeah. But he didn't. He, he's a good boy. Benny's a good, Benny's a good boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he leaves them after they're kind of drowsy now. And he, um, at first, while he's helping them, he's very not, like, believing them. They're, like, especially Ryan, because at first Michelle is knocked out still. And he is very much like, oh, sure, yeah, crazy oh, lumberjack. Oh, the it. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually they go and show him like the messed up car, and then he's like, "Okay, fine, I guess yeah, that's a chainsaw. Mm. That's that's a pretty big saw that would have done that. I guess you're not lying to me." <laughs> um, so yeah, he leaves them as they kind of both pass out, um, and he goes to you know get some stuff from his jeep. Um, but before he can get there, um, he runs into a hook-handed man named Tinkerer, who is played by Joe Unger. Who um, he played as a cop in Nightmare on Elm Street One. That's pretty cool. What? Yeah. Do you remember the scene where Nancy is trying to convince the police station that Freddy's about to get? I don't remember Tina's boy. I don't remember Tina's boyfriend's name, but like Tina's boyfriend got arrested for Tina's death, and like she's going to the like jail and be like, "Come on, Freddy's gonna get them." They're not believing her. That's Joe mm. Unger. That's Tinker. Oh yes, <laughs> I remember. Yeah. He's at the, the like the desk. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And Tinkerer is lighting flares on the road. I mean, I guess just so because it looks cool. I don't really feel like there's ever really a reason given for the flares. It does no. like give a couple cool like cinematography shots of like the jeep riding up in a in like a moment like through the not the jeep but his the truck. 
um, driving up through like like a low angle shot, like from the flare perspective, basically, and it looks cool. But the flares are just kind of there, uh, I guess, to like light the scene. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, yeah, they're like yeah. No, it's, if you yeah. have something to say, please say it. It's unimportant, but I mean, there are quite a few. Like he he took some time oh, yeah. to range these flares. You know? There are like probably at least like twenty flares, and you're like. Yeah. All right. Is this like when they drive down past the map, when he drives them past the after I'm like these flares just keep going, man. <laughs> but technology is our friend. He wanted to know where to so, go. Okay, he didn't want to get lost. He has a yeah, hook for his hand. Maybe his eyes are bad too. Um, um, and while he's doing that, uh, well, sorry, uh, the hook, the hook cannon man is. The, we also noted. We notice. I mean, at this point, Benny has no reason to understand what this means, but we do see. The truck is behind the hook handed man tinker, so we find out that he is the truck driver. Which I, we didn't mention when the truck showed up earlier, but it's actually a really like cool looking truck. It's got like its own like leather face face almost basically over the hood. And yeah, it's, like, like really some kind big, of a belt on it. Yeah. Like, giant tires. Like it's a cool looking truck. I mean I don't wrong. I don't get me wrong. I would never drive a truck that looks like this, because it's weird. But for the sake of this character, it's really cool to see him drive this truck. <laughs> I would drive the heck out of this. This is a really cool truck. I mean, I if, I, if I took the skin off, sure. Uh, I feel like the... <laughs> Isaiah's is only taking the truck if it has a it's skin like, Isaiah's like, I don't want it if the skin's gone. <laughs> I would slap that skin on a four-cylinder Acura, and it would be just as cool. <laughs> four-cylinder Acura. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and, um, he's all, uh, what, the, the hook-handed man, um, I read that, and, um, Benny goes to, like, look in the truck, because he asked the hook-handed man to, like, help him, uh, flip his Jeep back over, and he goes to look in the back of the truck, and he sees a chainsaw, so he gets worried, obviously, because he knows a chainsaw destroyed the other car, so he goes to his Jeep to grab his gun. Um, which is named Lucille, which is, you know, cool, I guess. B.B. King's guitar, I yeah. guess. Um, also, I guess, you know, maybe maybe Greg Nicotero, you know, suggested this to the people from Walking Dead, you know, and that's why <laughs> Negan has his bat in that named Lucille, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe the whoever wrote the Walking Dead comic just really liked this movie. It could happen. Negan's bat kills far more people than this gun does. That is true. This gun kills no one. Um, spoiler. It kills Grandpa. We think. Oh, you're Takes right. his nose off. If he wasn't already dead. Yeah. That's true. No, I technically, Maybe. I technically this gun does kill, like, two people. We'll get to that when we get to that. But, um, I forgot that that was the same gun. Because, like, this, there's a moment where this gun gets destroyed. But I think you're right bit. that he does still use the gun. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> There is a big yeah. moment where the gun, spoiler, for like a scene or two from now, and I'll say it again when it happens, there's a spoiler where this gun gets like sawed in half, so I yeah. forgot that he uses this gun later. Uh, but I do think you are right that he uses this gun later. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. as he's trying to like load the gun, um, the hook-handed man named uh, Tinker, Tinker. I'll try to remember to call him Tinker. I have him as hook man for the whole movie pretty much because... Once again, and may, this one I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a name tag. We don't find out his name till much later, and technically we never do. We only ever hear him referred to as Tink once yeah. in one line. His name is Tinker, apparently, which it's fair to like maybe assume that Tink is short for Tinker, I guess. But yeah. it's technology is his friend. Yeah. So, but yeah, so he does love technology. He does. So Tinker. Excuse me. So Tinker he runs over, runs the jeep towards the, runs the truck to the jeep, and Benny jumps out of the way. Um, the, he does flip over the jeep, so he was a man of his word. So you gotta respect that. He did help him, you know, write the write the jeep. Uh, <laughs> um, a drive pull now. Yeah, I mean it's a jeep, so it probably is drive pull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, after Benny jumps out of the way, he kind of tumbles down a little hill. Um, where Leatherface shows up at the bottom, and they get in a little, like, spinning around each other fight for a little bit before 
Um, Leatherface cuts Lucille in half with his saw. Um, then Benny just says, all right, fine, you want to do that? I'll kick your saw out of your hand, and now it's no longer a problem. Now it's, it's just you and me, hand to hand. So they, yeah. uh, they tussle, and they fall to the ground. Where Leatherface goes, you took my one, you took my favorite saw, so let me pull out my little bone saw I carry with me, apparently. <laughs> a little dribble bone saw. saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he cuts Benny's leg with it. <laughs> Dude, I love this fight scene. Oh, uh, you know, I'm it's sorry. great. Well, yeah. uh, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if I want to be that enthusiastic about it, but I oh, had been, when it started, I didn't even realize how much I've been waiting for somebody to fight Leatherface in, like, a fight. Because mm. he always just ambushes people, you know, and usually they're, like, 90 pounds or whatever. And finally, it's like, all right, you know, we've got an actual fight going. And then when he whipped out the little circular Dremel, again, repeating a bit from a previous movie, but it was still effective this time. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of kind of what you're saying there about like how you need to see that fight is kind of like, funny enough, when, you know, R.A. gets to fight uh, Victor Crowley and hatchet too it's a very similar situation where you get the all oh, big brutes fighting kind of thing yes. i will say yeah. that fight scene is much better than this one like this one i much do better. like but that one is amazing but it's the same idea of like hey cool we get to see this which is probably was probably suggested for hatchet 2 by either this person or i don't know the stunt coordinator of this movie kane hodder because they both end up being in that fight then <laughs> good point yeah. Yeah. Actually, if I remember, I think Kane Hodder is also the stunt coordinator of the Hatchet films, as well. If I remember right, so yeah. Makes but sense. it is cool to. See, I agree. It is really cool to finally get to see someone take it to Leatherface. You don't. We have not got to see that so far. I mean, I guess that's not fair. Technically, in the last movie, we got to see the Chainsaw versus Chainsaw fight with you know Dennis Hopper. Yeah. But the Chainsaw, chainsaw lightsaber duel. fight. Yeah. Yes. How could he forget? Um, but before Leatherface, uh, can kill Benny, cause they're like tussling and he definitely has like the upper hand and is about to like push him into his chainsaw. Cause for the, for anyone who doesn't know, at the very least Leatherface's chainsaws in this movie, you don't have to keep holding them. No. Um, they just will. There is no safety. Um, yeah. Uh, are there chainsaws in the real world that exist like that? Maybe. Not the average one. Maybe there are some, maybe... Maybe Leatherface jury rigs everyone so he can do cool, cool kills like this when he wants to. I don't know. Maybe Tinker so he t- Tinker like tinkers him for him, and you know he gets yeah, him ready. You know what? That would be a legitimate, you yeah. know, reasoning for how that would happen. And that is now my head cannon for why this is possible throughout this movie. <laughs> but yeah, Pretty so good. he is about to like push him into this chainsaw. When the, you know, crazy girl, who we don't know is crazy yet, but she pops up and, like, gets his attention and draws him away. Yeah. It's like, you don't want him, you want me. And Leatherface does, apparently. So he just like, kicks Benny and walks away. Yeah. It's like, oh, I guess I do want you. Which, you know, hey, Leatherface is kind of, you know, he's not all there. So it is sometimes it is easier to, you know, maybe convince him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if this was Tinker in this fight, he'd probably be like, no, I'll get you later. But Leatherface is like, oh, I do want you. Well, you, who, you said me. I get you now. But he yeah. also doesn't <laughs> talk, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so she draws him away. Uh, then we cut to Michelle and Ryan, who kind of wake up and start to go look for help. Then we cut back. And the crazy survivor girl is just kind of like runs back into frame, like does a really crazy laugh, and then kind of I guess circles back around now that she's lost Leatherface back to Benny, which feels like a bad plan, you know, a good way to lead him right back to him, but, you know, hey. It somehow doesn't do that. Uh, she does completely lose Leatherface. Uh, but yeah, so Thanks. she comes back. Um, they have kind of a fun little scene. Like, nothing crazy happens in it. Like, she's just kind of, she's crazy, but she does a pretty good job playing her crazy part and Ken Foray is really good in this movie. So this scene is just kind of charming between the two of them. And yeah, they kind of share, they share a smoke. She kind of tells him like her story. We find out that she is a survivor of a event that happened about probably about a week ago, maybe only five days. She does, you know, clarify possibly only five days. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, her sister is dead. Presumably maybe the girl from the opening, maybe not. doesn't matter, but yeah, um, so she's just like, they. she does give him her lighter, though, um, which is will be important later. Yes. Yeah. But that is 
kind of the gist of this. We also do find out that she ate a rat, a, a rat raw, but she does have a lighter, so... Yeah. If which she is could a, have rich history that ran of Zippo, is that what say, you're playing? I, you know, lit a fire with the lighter. I bring, well, I bring up, specifically because I knew this was Chris's thoughts, while rewatching the movie, I had an exact thought of exactly why she should not have done that, and it's a good thing she didn't. She is being hunted. If she starts a fire... That creates smoke. The hunters find her. And so on a second viewing, I went, oh, you know, actually, that does make sense. She, sh- I could see why she didn't start a fire. Mm. Yeah. Because they do so specifically like, that, mention in this scene, I believe. I feel like you might be giving that too much credit. It's, it's possible you're not, but I feel like you might be. I mean, I could be, but I also... I feel like... I agree. Realistically... The writer didn't think of that, probably. Maybe. I don't know. He does... You know, he wrote The Crow, and people love The Crow, so maybe he is a smart writer and just... You know what I mean? Like, I don't... Let's say he... Let's say he didn't. That do, that does still... It is an ex- explanation that negates the presumed plot hole you saw. Oh, well. There's lots of a plot hole, hole and just more of a, like... Well, why didn't she just cook the rat? Here's an explanation. She wasn't smart enough to think of it. And she, that's a realistic crazy. explanation because neither was I just now when y'all brought it up. <laughs> so <laughs> there are real people in the world who would uh, not think what? to do that. <laughs> and the answer, the, the answer we're going to settle on is it was one of our three ideas here. You decide like which one it is. <laughs> well, Vote now. Uh, <laughs> tell us down in the comments. We won't read them. I will. I read all the comments. We will. Austin read does them. read all the comments. All that the is comments. true. We don't have a lot, but... Don't leave any hurtful comments, please. Yeah. He disregards Or them. do, because I... I mean... As long as they're a, constructive. Yeah, they were the constructively hurtful, hurtful the comment being... for me a little bit that, you know, I think changed the podcast for the better, hopefully. Maybe Ooh. not. Find out. Now. <laughs> yeah. Listen to our podcast. Yeah, please listen. Um, but yeah, so... I got really off notes there because I think my notes were basically just scene with Crazy Girl. So I have to find where I was again. (laughs) Uh, Here we are. Um, Then as they're hanging out, kind of the end of their, not hanging out, but their end of their little scene, um, I believe they hear, uh, no, wait. I jumped to the wrong spot again. Well, we're getting to the inevitable demise of Crazy Girl pretty quick. Yeah, she ru- yeah. He, Benny leaves her to go do his thing. She tosses him the lighter, and then she gets found by Leatherface almost immediately and just gets yeah. chainsawed. In the cut we saw, the rated R cut, off screen entirely. Yep. And yeah. I believe the unrated cut, you do see like a lot of blood spatter up to her face, at least. And in the yeah. original, like I think unreleased cut, like kind of idea was she gets like cut in half completely. It's a shame we didn't uh, get to see that. Now we do see a great scream on her part. That is a true, very yeah. convincing and blood curdling scream. It's a good one. I agree. Um, then they're in two different groups at this point, but both Benny as well as the group of Ryan and Michelle uh, both hear that scream and they start walking through the forest in their own little groups, kind of like walking around a lot now. Kind of like, oh, what's going on? i got to figure out what's happening. And Ryan uh, gets himself... Wait, nope. Yeah, Ryan gets himself trapped in a bear trap. He just walks right into a bear trap. His leg is in a bear trap now. All right, P. Ryan. That's it okay, for him. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Well, but I mean, yeah, that is basically... Yeah, I mean, that's the end no, of him having warrant. a chance to do Fine. anything. But, the beginning of the end for Ryan. Um, beginning of the end, yeah. Uh, yeah, Ryan gets trapped in a bear trap and then gets chainsawed off screen, but apparently not to death because he is still technically alive in the next scene we see of him, technically. Or even in a visible spot because yeah. when we do see him alive, he looks like kind of beaten up. But yeah, there's like definitely not chainsawed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks like he's going down to chainsaw him, so. We, we were afraid. Yeah. He's presumed dead for now. Presumed dead. Um, and Michelle uh, runs away, and she finds a house. And she, you know, does what you do when you are in find a house. You let yourself in immediately. Because mm-hmm. these movies are actually home invasion movies. 
and the Sawyers are heroes. <laughs> They're American, yes. <laughs> I'm joking. Just the average American. Yeah. Well, they did what any eat, of us do. You eat the burglar. They're the average yeah. Texan. Let's. I'm not going to lump all of America into this. I'll lump myself into this, but not all of America. <laughs> I would eat a burglar. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say no to a nice steak. <laughs> nice burglar home intruder steak. Mm, some, some nice uh, um, what roast. Was what, was, what was what did he say the last? What did he say in the last movie? The, um, the, somebody's gonna make something with eyes. Cheese. No, that's the first movie. In the last movie, they get like really specific, like eye pate. I think is one of the things that. Yes, I'm all pate. I need yes. some eye pate. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Almost I have to learn what pate is, but maybe I would. I think pate is liver. I don't think you can have eye pate. <laughs> ah, eye liver. I don't think it's actually possible now that I think about it. <laughs> but I could also be wrong. This is not a food podcast. I don't need to know what pate is. <laughs> Tune into Food Boys next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> food Boys. Making your favorite horror foods. Eye pate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in this house, she finds a little girl who is... Uh, played by Jennifer Blanco, who is young Tina in Friday the 13th Part 7. Ooh, oh my god. She gosh, kills her dad with telepathy. <laughs> and now she's in this movie. Um, and then this she, she kind of runs away, scared, because, you know, there's a home intruder in her house. Um, and, you know, Michelle follows her, because that's what you do when you scare a child. You try to scare them more. I'm just going to paint Michelle as the villain now. Going forward, <laughs> but no, uh, she follows her up the stairs, and she lead and uh, little girl who does not ever get a name, even in the credits or the like anything. She's just little girl. Um, uh, little girl leads her to the new bone room. It's now upstairs because this is a different house um, and a different family. Yeah, I mean, I actually believe I was reading, I was listening to the documentary. I actually think the intention was for this to could be completely a different. Like, people refer to them as the Sawyers, but they're never referred to as the Sawyers in the movie. And technically, I don't think they're even supposed to be. They're supposed to be like a new group of crazy people who have like kind of adopted Leatherface into their crazy, weird new nuclear, nuclear family on crack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd like new, to get to that at the end. The new methods. Like, yeah. But, yeah, so I actually, I thought when I watched the movie, I was like, oh, maybe they're just other family members. Because, you know, families can be big. He lived with, you know. It's his cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe this is his actual mom, and he wasn't living with his mom in the last, like, okay, sure, fine, whatever. But it does sound like the intention was for these to be, like, maybe none of them are even family at all. They're just kind of a bunch of misfits that have built up their own family in this craziness. Yeah, that is um, does sound like that might have been more the intention. I won't get into if I think that was executed. Probably, I mean, I, I whatever. But like, that was I think the intention was for them not to be related, except for one of the characters is definitely supposed to be related due to certain dialogue, which we will get to. It's a creepy dialogue. Never. Don't want to get to it, but we'll get to it. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So she walks into the room, Michelle, and she finds the new bone room. And uh, she kind of walks over to little girl, and little girl kind of, you know, baits her in, you know, acting kind of scared for a little bit before she just stabs her in the side with a bone shiv. Um, and also <laughs> Classic does, bone shiv. She also, I think, does a little puppetry. I think she says, you know, yakety yak with the little doll she has. Yeah, yakety yak, don't talk bad. Which I believe is a, both like... Baby skeleton, yeah. Yeah, which I believe is also like a callback even to the, in early in this movie when... I want to say that's something that um, Alfredo said with his weird little skull on a stick to her. Oh. In the okay. first, like, one of the first scenes we see him in. Like, it's it's a throwaway scene, so, like, I didn't write down him saying it at all. But I believe mm. he did say it. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, then after she gets stabbed, she kind of stumbles back into the loving arms of Tex. Who's not loving at all. He is a bad guy. We get it revealed. That thing you almost definitely realized. The first scene you see of him. You're like, this guy's too good to be true. He's definitely evil. He is. Uh, he is evil. You're right. Woo. <laughs> you were right. He is bad. Uh, they did. He is bad. They might have had you. Did, did they have you when we saw that, you know, it wasn't him driving the truck? Oh, you, they didn't? That's also fair. Uh, 
But yeah, he's here, and he takes her downstairs. Um, and we get the closest thing to a dinner scene in this movie, but I will say they changed it enough that I'm I'm okay with it. Like it yeah, didn't feel, feel like, like oh it's this yeah. scene again. I mean, it, it felt materially different. Yeah, it was a know? scene where they torture a girl at a dinner table, so it is. And Grandpa's there, so I guess you could, if you look at like in those two ways, it is a dinner scene redo. But it, they change. Unlike a lot of other things they do in this movie, they actually changed enough that make it good, uh, or different at least. I mean, you don't have to like yeah. it, but they change it enough that I don't look at it as like great, just doing another dinner scene. So credit to that. Um, and he like nails her into this chair this time. Unlike la- any of the other times, we, he's I, like with like bone nails. It looks like. Yeah, I believe this is also another one of those splittery. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of a pseudo crucifixion going on yeah. here. I believe this is another one of those things that I believe is very either this scene or her escape later is very like cut down. Like you see a lot more of the gore and it, I maybe the unrated cut, but definitely in the initial concept because in the documentary they showed like her hands like coming off like really bloody. So mm. didn't get that though because the MPA hated horror after like. 85 they realized horror existed and went we can't let this be existing this is graphic and horrible this is ruining <laughs> christian america yeah <laughs> what are you doing and it took till like you know 2000 the early 2000s for them to, for people to go oh, what if we try to do you know graphic violence again and the mpa is like ah oh, we don't care make your movie well, whatever <laughs> we'll just we'll just walk away <laughs> we don't care anymore <laughs> But at this point, we are still very much in the point where they care. Um, so yeah. we don't get to see her hands. We get to see, like, the nails coming from the bottom of the, like, which, like, to be fair, it's an effective enough, like, shot that you go, oh, effective. crap. But you yeah. don't get to see gore. So if you're a gore hound, this movie, at least in the rated R cut, is definitely not for you. Uh, where was I? Nail her to the chair. Did I write that somewhere? Yep. To the uh, then we find out that Grandpa is here. Um, this time, I believe dead. Like it is definitely more dead than, than he ever has before. Well, like, I feel like <laughs> the implication in the other two movies is yes, fair, unrealistically so that he was alive both times. This time, yeah. it feels like these people are crazy and want to keep him around, even though he is very much. Keep him alive. Yes. He does not move an inch. Yeah, and wow. I don't think he's supposed. I. My interpretation was that he wasn't even supposed to be alive here. Yeah, like I don't, I don't think he's supposed to be alive anymore. There is not the slightest. I mean, Wikipedia's, you know, interpretation of of this as well, because and you know, Grandpa's appearances on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre wiki, uh, they always listed as just Gramps, uh, Grandpa's corpse. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't trust that website, but I'll, I'll take it. I agree with it in this instance. Um, but yeah, and so we meet Grandpa. He's still alive. I think this is the first time we see them feed him some blood. I believe there's actually a really funny, funny, creepy line from like, well, Michelle's kind of like, why are you doing this to me kind of a thing? And the little girl is like, well, if we don't bleed, if you don't poke holes in you, you won't get blood for Grandpa. And then she like pours blood all over his mouth, trying to make him drink it. It's... Dude, it's creepy yeah. and really cool and funny as well. Like it's credit to this scene, you know, for sure. I, I liked the scene a lot. Um, then we also meet Mama, who um, I don't know if I assume not in real life, but in this movie, the character is one like is I guess a former smoker because they like talk through like one of the, like artificial little, larynx, yeah. Um, the actress who plays her is uh, Miriam Bird Nethery, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, I don't did not do a lot of research on this person. I don't know if they actually like have an artificial larynx. They might, but or it might just be you know acting. <laughs> it's quite possible. Um, but yeah, we meet Mama, um, and then uh, Tinker. He brings in Ryan's body. Um, and Tinker and Tex have a conversation uh, before we find out that uh, Tex's real name is Eddie, but he doesn't like it. And once again, this is where I should have brought it up. I brought it up already, but this is where I should have brought it up for sure is 
the just like loving nature of this version of the family, which is so weird to say about these yeah. murders. Like he like he you know you get this moment of, like text me like getting real angry like don't call me text uh, call me text I hate why can't you do that and like Tinker like feels like actually like hurt by it. like oh crap I'm like I don't remember exactly what he says but it's, his hand on his shoulder he's, he's like, like yeah I'm sorry. sure yeah. and it's like okay he res- they like it, it's a loving family of murderers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, he then uh, goes over to gag Michelle. Um, and then we cut to Benny, who is watching um, Alfredo uh, throw body parts into a swamp. Because there's swamps at this part, part of Texas. Um, Dude. Yeah. There's not. If you haven't been to Texas, there, there is no way that the road scene and the swamp scene were filmed within a hundred miles of each other. Well, there's just well no they, they probably were actually because this whole movie was filmed in California. So, okay. So they actually quite possibly were. <laughs> but I will say there is an element of like there are ways to have a swamp in Texas. If you put it, put this scene, put this setting of this movie. Right near like the Louisiana border, there can be a little like bit of swamp. Beaumont. Yeah, yeah, there's some swamps in Texas, but the last time we saw a scene was them t- was you know tech knew, where we knew where the location was was Tech saying to take this road to get to Houston, which means this is on the way to Houston from California. So coming from the west, you're not you you just you're not you're not hitting a swamp yeah. in that like area from wherever they're probably they are in- on the road from san antonio to houston yeah and there there is no swamp there um logistically speaking yeah once again though if you don't know te- if you're not a texan like the three of us are this might mean you might not have got taken out of the scene by in any way and that's fair i don't think that this movie really had to like be super accurate on well texas can't have a swamp there like that's that is a kind of a silly hill to die on, so I'm not going to. But I will mention that it is an error. <laughs> I, I agree that geographical accuracy is a silly hill to die. On. However, this like it's not. I don't think the point is accuracy. I do think that in the previous, like especially in the first movie, they really did make a character out of the landscape, and here they just kind of warp it to fit the scene. It's fair. Where Sometimes we're in a bog, because that looks cool. And sometimes we're in a dusty hill, because that looks cool. And I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan, but I'll elaborate on it more at the end. But It's fair. Yeah. I, I think it doesn't... It just in terms of like sheer setting alone, it, it doesn't create a, a consistent setting. And so we don't have really a consistent feeling that we're kind of soaking in throughout the movie. But also... What we get to see Leatherface navigate is not the same, and that changes, I think, his character as well in an inadvertent way. Fair. Maybe I'm nitpicking. I mean, you, you have the right to have your opinion. <laughs> Even if I think it's wrong and you're stupid for having it. That happens a lot. <laughs> it does. It does happen a lot. Because I'm a bad person who, you know... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, then we cut away from this. This is the only real point of like this scene, really. I get at this point is uh, that we. Sorry, I did miss. I skipped into this a little bit too far. This whole scene, we are actually getting from Benny's point of view. He is watching this happen. Before we cut back away from them, back to the Sawyer house where uh, Tex comes in and brings Leatherface his new golden chainsaw. Like a chrome plated chainsaw, it's, yeah. It's, it's chromed out. Epic looking. I mean like I don't know why it's here. I mean, does it he never really gets to even use it, but I can't deny that it looks cool. It is a cool looking chainsaw. Um that does say the saw is family on it. So that line is yep. canon. Um <laughs> that did happen. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. I guess to be fair, that line can really just that could just be something that they as I don't know. I mean, yes, that movie line does come from the last movie, but it is kind of a, relatively speaking, generic concept for, you know, murderers who like to use chainsaws to go, well, the saws. I don't know. Also, something I think might. Also, another thing that adds to, to why it definitely makes sense for 
well, not actually, no. I take, I'm take, I was going to say something, but then I realized that it contradicts a different point I already made about mm-hmm. how these characters aren't the Sawyers. But if they were were the Sawyers, it would make sense because the word saw is the first you know part of Sawyer, which is something my dad actually pointed out to me, which I think is a, at least unintentional, really cool detail. But considering the fact that we didn't learn the Sawyer name till the second film, I think it probably was on purpose. Uh yeah. Logically related. Yeah, but not these characters, maybe, because they don't ever call them Sawyers in this one. So, yeah, but, but then what follows is the worst depiction of Leatherface. Um, like, not quite. At least, unless depending on which part you don't like, I don't know which part you're saying opinion. is the worst part. I don't know because well, the part I thought was the worst depiction also comes up in this movie. So it might be a... Di- you might be right on what you think, but it might not be what I thought. So I might be wrong. What are you thinking? Uh, we'll see. We'll get to it. It's not okay, this upcoming scene. Yeah. This upcoming scene is uh, Tinker getting kind of mad mm-hmm. because, you know, hey, he didn't even kill Ryan, so why would he deserve this present? So he takes away his uh, Walkman and, like, throws it into the oven. And then Leatherface gets real pissed because, you know, they took his things and he, like, chokes him and, like, forces him to get it back out of the oven. With his, his with human his hand. human hand. And yeah. so like, he tries to go for it with his hook hand, but Leatherface is like, no. And so, like, if you think that's the worst depiction of Leatherface, then that's fair, I guess. I don't agree. But is that what you meant? <laughs> I'm talking about this and everything else that follows until Mom sends him away to go do his clown lessons. But the clown lessons is before the next creepy thing, I feel like. The part I hate. At least. I don't know. Okay, I think we're on the same page. Then I'm getting the scene mixed yeah. up. But it, yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's fair because for most of the characters, they stay in this one room for like a third of the movie. But yeah. Leatherface is one of the characters that actually kind of leaves and comes back. Okay, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Leatherface got pissed at that. And then we cut back to... Uh, <clears throat> I believe this, this part of the scene actually ends with Mama going, oh, go do your lessons. You're right. And he yeah. leaves. Um, then we cut to Alfredo, questions. who gets uh, questioned at gunpoint uh, by Benny. Uh, before Benny, then, Benny, yeah, before Benny, then just kind of knocks him out into the swamp. Um, then we cut to Leatherface doing his lessons with a with this like spelling game that shows this picture of a clown that he repeatedly types as food, and I love this scene it this is, is great scene. so yes. it is you would it's one of those scenes where i would describe it as not this is going to sound confusing but i hope i get to the point where you understand at the end it reminds me of i think it's a principle we've actually talked about i brought up before is the principle of like taking a joke too far and then taking it one step further where it becomes funny again this scene goes on for a while of him just typing in food and it not working and, like, by the third time, you go, all right, I get it. But then he does it, like, the fourth time and the fifth just time. just like, the background constantly, yeah. And it's, I, 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 I've described it before, I believe, on this podcast, is it's the same kind of concept as um, the, like, Peter Griffin falling and get, hitting his knee. And he goes, <sighs> and, like, at, by, like, the 30-second mark, you're like, why the crap is this happening? And then for at least Dude. me, by, like, the minute mark, I'm like, dang it, you got me back in. This is funny again. Uh-huh. And this is a similar... To be fair, that was me when I was younger. I actually don't like pretty much Family Guy at all anymore. But it fits a really good example of this principle of comedy of... You do something just long enough that it becomes not funny. If you take it a step further, sometimes it becomes funny again. And I think this is one of them. Uh, But yeah, so he repeatedly types food and he gets getting really mad about it. Because he's like, no, that's food. Because he's stupid, and that's all he knows is that's a person, so it's food. So we eat it. And he's yeah. like, "Why are you saying no? Speak and spell. You are wrong." <laughs> <laughs> um, and while this is happening, uh, I believe Benny is watching on, being like, "The crap is going on." Kind of a reaction to <laughs> Leatherface <laughs> just trying to type in food. F O O D. Wrong. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then it like gives him like it's five letters, buddy. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> but he types in four, and he types in food. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> uh, now we cut back to the scene that I hate, and I think might be the scene yes. that they also hate. So we cut back I hate inside this the scene house, as well. Yeah. Um, where it's kind of a prolonged scene, but the general gist 
is that we find out that Leatherface, he plays harmonica. Uh, because uh, Tex kind of implies, like, hey, maybe we should let him have some fun. Which, first off, I don't even want to call it playing harmonica, because playing harmonica is a funny joke for what we do. This is, you know, assault, which assault's not a funny thing to joke about, so I'm not even going to refer to it as him playing harmonica. The, the implication here is that he assaults women, which is not ever what I wanted from Leatherface. <laughs> not really what I wanted from yeah, any character, ever. ever. Uh, personally. But Leatherface has just never been that yeah. kind of a villain. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, I yeah. agree that... Here's the thing. Personally, I don't want to see it ever in a horror movie because it's, it's not something I want. But, it, especially Leatherface, it makes no sense for his character. But, no, yeah. never. Um, and like, the implication is also that due to a line at the end, like, oh, he makes the prettiest babies. I think the implication, and I believe uh, R.A. Mihalov has in, has said in, like, interviews that he took it as well, is that a little girl is his daughter. Uh, Which is wild, that Leatherface is a, is a father. Yeah. That's, for so many reasons, so out of character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's terrible. Terrible, terrible idea. This whole scene adds nothing but I guess the I get I me mean, I guess the the intention was to make you have even more tension like oh no what's gonna happen to Michelle but I didn't like it I think it's stupid I think in a lot of ways it kind of ruins who Leatherface is yes as we've established before, really... Leatherface is supposed to be sympathetic is a villain almost like and I would argue even that last scene was the first time in this movie where they kind of almost gave you that sympathy again and be like oh wait yeah he's not all there he's trying to type in food but you know he does force himself on women which is not not good yeah like one thing that you pointed out when we were talking about the first movie was that we it's revealed to us in a in a really masterful way that he is the victim of the family like he's this runt to the others in the family and then here that is just totally reversed he's this utter monster who is I mean, we've hammered it in, but like his sadistic attitude towards his brothers is a huge outlier to the otherwise loving attitude of the family. He's he's like he's the worst member of the family. He's the least likable member of the family that we see, except for maybe the daughter. Yeah, little girl might be worse. But that's fair. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But also, she's a little girl, so you kind of go, well, it's obviously her upbringing, not her fault. Uh, So he is the worst. Her dad is Leatherface. But also, it's Leatherface. you 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 know, he had a whole you know life living with you know. W.E. Sawyer, can you blame him for turning out bad? Yeah, whoever that guy is. <laughs> well, whoever that be, must be. Okay, I'm sorry. Calling, renaming the character when they're only establishing the first movie where the character doesn't have a name, I don't think is a flaw. I agree, I'm mad that they didn't address the second movie, because I like the second movie and I don't want them to erase it. But they kind of had to, because Leatherface dies. <laughs> so, <laughs> does. They, if they That's wanted to do point. another movie, they had to either somehow bring him back to life or say, hey, that movie didn't happen because he is alive at the end of one. Let's just go with that story as well instead. Yeah. So I don't have any problem with my Drayton now being named W.E. Sawyer because his name, he literally, his name was either in, in the credits in that first movie was uh, Old he was Man. The cook. No, he wasn't even officially in that first movie. There is a line where, you know, they call him the cook. Accused oh, of being a yeah, cook. He's just the <laughs> cook. But that wasn't his name. He doesn't have a name. <laughs> so I don't have a problem with him being named W. E. Sawyer. I mean, it's a kind of a lame name, sure. I mean, that's fair, I guess. If you don't like it's a W. E. I don't know if that's your real name. Yeah, you could stand for something cool. You could stand for like Wesley I don't know, Uh, whatever yeah. Sawyer. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. West East. He doesn't know where he's from. West East. Uh, but yeah, so this scene thankfully finally ends. Um, there are a couple other like moments. I think it might be during this scene. It might be during one of the other scenes. I will just want to mention it. Once again, there is like a kind of a funny scene where like they, once again, the, not, the likable characters in the family of, you know, Tex and uh, excuse me, um, Tinker, Tinker and like Colin. get think it's really funny that he's wearing colored underwear because uh california boy california, which i was like yes. okay and then i think also in this scene somewhere in this moment i don't know exactly when it happened but it definitely happens before my next note is uh there is like a scene where they pull a rope and 
she reacts like something happens. And apparently it's because in real life, or not real life, but in the movie, <laughs> in the actual, like, original cut, um, they were, that's the, that is where Ryan actually dies. There is, like, a sledgehammer from a trap that swings and, like, hits him and kills him. You don't yeah. know that if you watch the movie. Huh. You, you've watch. got to listen to the dialogue to know that this kill yeah. happened. <laughs> um, so he dies in this scene and kind of a, especially the rated R cut, a completely throwaway scene that doesn't matter. Uh, nice. Also, I guess weird, creepy fact, because I haven't had a lot of weird facts or fun facts or anything in this movie at all, really. Um, weird, creepy fact is the way that they hung him up was a, a call not callback, but like a, not tribute either, that's a word, 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 it, it was paying homage, I guess we'll go with that, to um, a one of the actual, like, crime scene photos from one of the Ed Gein murders. There's like, yeah. there like a famous Ed Gein thing where, like, there's, uh, I believe a woman who is hanging upside down, her head had been cut off, and, like, she's been, like, mostly cut in half, and this was supposed to be a tribute to... Not tri- tribute feels like a very like dark, tribute. but like an homage. Yeah, an homage to, you, to that. Guy. <laughs> and I believe even one of the original like plans was to maybe cut him in half as well for it. But that was definitely like they realized that was never going to happen even That's before they filmed far. anything. I, from my understanding, uh, but yeah, so that happens um, huh. in that scene. Uh, then thankfully, after all that weird scene that all that stuff happens, and we finally. It ends because Benny shows up and he just lights up the place. Uh, he uh, Dude. shoots yeah. off Tinker's ear and hand, as well as hitting Grandma repeatedly. Once again, in the cut we saw, you see him hit her like once, kind of. And in the unrated cut, from my understanding, he hits her like three or four times and you see him, some blood come off of her and whatnot. And I don't know if it's... I think it also might only be in the unrated cut, but there is like a line from Tinker telling Tex to like, go get him, basically like, oh, I'm gonna die. So he does die in this scene as well. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. They so he, he, he yeah. does shoot one like dangerous character. That's, yeah. that's good. Um, but also, not, you know, other than the mom, like right in the heart. But even in the like unrated cut, this guy, you know, dies from getting his hand blown off and bleeding out off screen. So it's still kind of a lame death, no matter what way you cut it. Uh- it is a lame death because they've already established he could survive losing a hand. <laughs> He doesn't have one already. Yeah, that is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they also He also does uh, hit uh, Grandpa blowing off his jaw, so definitely killing him if there was any doubt. Um, there wasn't. He was obviously dead, but he is definitely dead now because his jaw was blown off. Um, doesn't it blow like a hole straight through the middle of his face? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. his whole nose through the bridge gone. of the nose. That sounds yeah. definitely plausible. <laughs> yeah. um, then Michelle she runs out of the door not the window I was very disappointed actually like this movie wanted to homage every, to see, like, yeah, everything else they homage from these other movies but she walks out the front door and doesn't jump out a window like you redid like every other scene in some way but we're, we redid the, the cool taking one. your picture scene but not the jumping out a window scene I don't know dude okay. That's too crazy. Yeah, it feels like a weird choice. The MPA said no windows. No windows can be harmed <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> no windows are harmed in the making of this film. Except for the ones Benny just shot out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They just have... Those, so those windows just have flesh wounds. They're still alive. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she runs out the door and she meets up with Benny um, and kind of... Just kind of like says hi to him, basically. And then Leatherface uh, can drive a truck now. This is also seems a, a little bit past his mental age. Yeah, no, I agree entirely. Um, I I never understand when you know horror monsters can drive. He's not the only one. There's another one from one of my favorite horror movies um, where I still go. I don't know if that person would be able to drive. Spoiler: I'm talking about Halloween. Michael Myers drives in that first movie, and he went into a mental asylum at like seven. Don't know where he learned to drive. Uh, but 
but observation. Also, yeah. le- the difference is, I guess I would say, Leatherface has had a very loving family who might have had a chance to teach him to drive. It's actually more believable that he knows how to drive than it is Michael Myers in Halloween. Right. Uh-huh. He, he operates a chainsaw, yeah. and, you know. And, you know, he has he has a very loving family in this movie who would probably be willing to teach him how to drive. Uh-huh. And yeah. then he'd run them over. Yeah, Tex's like, hey, you want to drive? And he's like, yeah, sure. And well, Leatherface just goes, food. Uh, but... <laughs> And then he drives over Tink's hand, and Tink has yeah. to replace his own hand. With a... That's why Tink doesn't have his hand. Because <laughs> yeah, Leatherface yeah. ran it over. <laughs> Car accident. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, he hits Benny and knocks him down. Um, drives over his limp body. One of like the 12 times you're led to believe maybe he's dead. Uh, he's not. Like ever in the movie, but spoiler. <laughs> he is the the protagonist of this yeah. film. I mean, Michelle's supposed to be, but you are right. Uh, <laughs> he is definitely the one who steals the show and does a lot more of the damage, but I think the implication is we're supposed to be rooting for her because, you know, it's the classic final girl trope. We're supposed to be rooting for her, but, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm rooting for Benny yeah. as well. He's the underdog. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, after he runs her over, um, he pulls out his chainsaw, um, and then a like rock song starts to play, and kind of we have like a rock like, score for the rest of the movie, basically. So yeah, that's cool. We got some metal playing in the background. Um, and then he goes to chase after Michelle, but you know, Michelle decides before the chase, the chase starts to like turn around and decides that she can take him on. You know, she tells him to bring it on, and she calls for him some reason crazy effort. Um, she's really yeah. like, I'm ready for this, which. Uh, that's a, I feel like a weird choice, but you know, she thinks she can take it. Like nothing up to this point should lead her to believe that she's mm-hmm. ready for this. No, nope. no. I mean, there is an element of to play devil's advocate for this movie, because why not? Um, is maybe this was supposed to be less of a her being like, yeah, I'm gonna take you on, and her going, crap. He took out my other guy. You know what? Screw it. Just bring it on. Like it's that like giving up, but like yeah, I'm not. I'm going down with a fight. Maybe that's what we're supposed to get from it. Yeah, yeah. Like to play devil's advocate, maybe that was more the intention because it definitely could be played it off as that if that's what you want it to be. Yeah, she's kind of ended up in the same mental state as our our previous creature girl that we saw. Kind of establishing way too quickly from where she was like the last time we saw her talking to immediately crazy like the other girl was like she hasn't eaten a single rat yeah no rats eaten. She? rats harmed in this movie armadillos harmed in this movie windows no windows harmed <laughs> right uh but yeah so she can take she thinks she can take on leatherface um and we start a little chase scene um Kind of get a little shots of them chasing through the bayou. <laughs> Before we cut back to Tex and Benny, who starts to get up. And they start circling for a fight. And in one of, like, maybe my favorite lines, maybe in, like, m- maybe any horror movie, honestly, it comes up here. Because Benny asks him, why did you do this? Like, why do you guys do this? And yes. Tex says, well, we were hungry. And he's like, have you ever heard of pizza? And it's like... All right. And he's like, I like liver. Yeah, I like onions. <laughs> I like pain. I like pain. You're like, to be fair, the I like liver, onions, and uh, pain twice is not the part that I think is the best line I've ever seen. It's the the pizza response to we were hungry. Like, that got me. I was like, respect. That is a great line. Uh, and they kind of are circling around. some point, I don't remember where he even got it. Benny has, I believe, a, no, it's text comes out with an axe, right? One of them has an axe. Yes. One of them has an axe. Uh, they pull an axe off of the truck. Okay. Well, who, yeah. who did it? Who has the axe? Because it doesn't end up so, matter. Well, Benny's the one that swings it into the gas tank. Yeah, okay. So Benny has the axe, and he swings it into the gas tank, and it starts pouring out. Um, and he then the axe is gone now because it went into a gas tank, so it can no longer be used as a weapon. Uh, it's like a video game. When you use a, use the weapon once, it like breaks. You're like, that's not how an axe yeah. works, but all right. Uh, but then, yeah. you know, Tex realizes that's not how that works and takes the axe out of the gas tank, I'm pretty sure. Does he? It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Let's be real. 
it doesn't matter. They tussle around for a while. Not much happens until they kind of fall into the gas. But mostly it gets on Tex. Uh, Benny walks walks away a little bit from him. Pulls out that very important lighter from earlier. Because I will say, genuinely, this movie does a very good job of like... I'm not going to say foreshadowing, but like bringing things back that they set up earlier. I guess that might be a form of foreshadowing. I don't know. But like... They, like, will, like, set up something, you'll kind of forget it happened, and then they'll bring it back in a way where you go, like, okay, they brought that back. Like, when they bring the lighter back out, I was like, oh, okay. And he throws the lighter at him, lights him on fire, and then the truck explodes um, as, as Benny's walking away. Um, it's really cool. We got a pro, yeah. as you guys mentioned in the very beginning when we talked about Kane Hodder, there's a prolonged fire stunt in this scene. Before the truck explodes, which is gotta love fire fire stunts. But yeah, I don't know if you have to, but we do. <laughs> no, you legally, have to. you you be have required. to love. Fire you stunts. are absolutely <laughs> legally obliged. I guess. <laughs> yeah, you understand. Um, and then we come back to Michelle and Leatherface um, as they're running some more, and she gets caught in a rope trap that pulls her. If for there's a second where it like gets. For some reason, the rope traps, like, pulley system, like, it gets the bag, like, the sandbag gets, like, caught on a branch. So, I guess Leatherface... It, like, lands on a branch yeah, horizontally. Right. Which I guess, like, stuff we're, I guess we're supposed to be like, oh, no, Leatherface is getting closer to her. But then, like, in the end, she still gets, like, dragged by... Like, either way, neither option were good for her. So, I don't know what we're supposed... Like, it feels like that's the moment where you're like, oh, crap, we got stuck here. We don't get to make our escape. But she wasn't making her escape. She was getting pulled to who knows where by a rope well, trap. Into the, the bog. <laughs> yeah, we do yeah. find... Yeah, but, like, in this moment, you don't know exactly where she's getting pulled. And you're like... I mean, I guess, yeah, Leatherface killing you might be worse than wherever you go, but we don't know that yet. But all right. I just felt like a really weird scene to put in here. Maybe it was literally just for padding, I guess, of just like, all right, oh, the trap's not working. Oh, okay, it is now. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, she gets pulled gets into... Yanked into the quagmire. Yeah. Um, they're both in there now. Leatherface follows in there. Uh, but then Benny shows up. Um... Also, by the way, when he chases her in there, um, sorry, no, I'm forgetting what happened and trying to jump ahead, but no, he's, he doesn't go in the water yet. He like is standing at the edge while she's in the water about to chainsaw her when Benny comes out, comes, comes back into the movie and pushes him into the water. They fall in, uh, the chainsaw as we established, even though this one, I guess, spoiler alert was brand new and Tinker didn't like that he had it so I guess Tinker isn't the reason the chainsaws keep going like we established as a possibility earlier they just do um this chainsaw keeps running throughout the water it like swims <laughs> yeah like a yeah, motorboat it or something. sure does swim a it's lot. a buoyant chainsaw yeah yeah despite being fully chromed out yeah <laughs> you know I mean chrome is not can you can make a boat out of chrome chrome boat I mean, yeah. I'll give you the chainsaw is still not buoyant, but I feel like the chrome doesn't make it not buoyant. <laughs> that much chrome definitely makes it not buoyant. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Nah, you're, <laughs> nah. it's still a flaw, but not for that reason. It just it shouldn't have been buoyant in the first place. Yeah, it definitely should never have been buoyant because uh, it's a chainsaw. <laughs> but it is, and that's how the world works in this movie, so we're just going to move on. It's buoyant, yeah. accept it. Um, yeah. And so yeah, they get another little, a little bit smaller this time. But we get a little Benny versus Leatherface fight again. This time in the water, mm, um, before yeah. Leatherface uh, takes Benny and runs his head into the chainsaw, presumably killing him forever. Presumably. Presumably. Definitely forever. I'm presuming. Yeah, and but also during this like tussle, Leatherface is a little weakened because Michelle is able to walk over now with with a rock, and she is able to. Swing it down and bash his head a few times. What she couldn't do with the armadillo earlier. Once again, really good, like, calling back to your previous plot point. I respect it yes. a lot. Like, and so the next scene with the is yeah. full of this as well. There's going to be even more of it in this next scene that we're about to discuss. The last scene we're about to discuss here. Um, uh, the next morning, uh, somehow, uh, Benny... Oh, sorry, she's walking in the desert and a truck drives up. It's the... The last chance 
gas station truck, and she's really scared. But Benny opened the door because Benny lived somehow. Hey, Benny. <laughs> and you want to know how what, how he lived? Uh, well, he didn't in the original cut that went to test screenings, and the fan, the, like the audience, was really disappointed that he died. So they uh, reshot the ending. Come on, that's a dumb reason. That's fair. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so he's back. He the original ending. I believe the original ending basically ends like there's even a more like visual shot of like him definitely like getting his head cut before we cut to like the next morning where I believe in the next morning she just she watches uh, the little girl get driven away in a police car. And it's kind interesting. Of, and it's and the, she's like playing with her doll in like the mirror, looking at her, and there's like that face on Michelle like oh, it continues because she's still around. And it's kind of, but and that's how the first that was supposed to end. But test screenings didn't like it, so we get the ending we're about to get instead, which is yeah. Benny shows up in the truck. Um, he goes to you know get he helps her in, and then he goes around again to the truck. But out of the back of the truck pops Alfredo, who hammers him in the back, um, and then kind of uh, like circles around trying to like get to her, and he has a couple lines. I, I believe he has a couple lines that are like. Does he? He might not have any. He might not have any lines that call back to anything. It might be her lines afterwards. He, he gibbers. Yeah, he you know, gibbers a bunch. He does a lot of crazy like. I can't. I don't yeah, but yeah. yeah, he's eventually. Eventually, it leads to a bunch of him breaking like all the windows and him being like on the truck bed looking at her, and he's like, "What? I'm trying, there was a there was a callback line in there." Because there's also the last one at the end, but there was one in somewhere in that scene. That I don't remember what it was, but it was well done. I just didn't write it down. You mean when she says there's roadkill all over the No, Texas that's the, that's the one I remember. There is a oh, okay. different one where he says something, or she says something that's like a callback to in this first little scene. I don't, I don't remember what it was, though. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, she he basically asked her like if she's... Oh, she doesn't... You don't have the guts for this. You can't do this. And she says she can with some expletives. And she shoots him. Um, and then they pull out, they push, they push out the, uh, you know, Alfredo's body off the truck before they start to drive away. And that's where she says, yes, the line about how there's roadkill everywhere in Texas, which is a line that, uh, Tex had said to her in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they drive away into the sunset, but wait, what's that in this last shot? That's a chainsaw as well as. The leg brace, leg brace that was definitely there the whole time, and there's a reason for it. Come on, Isaiah, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leatherface is still alive. He, Leather, it's like if this was a Marvel movie, it then cuts to like a black screen that says, Leatherface will return. <laughs> 2023. Yeah. In Texas Chainsaw time. Massacre, Leatherface 2. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface 2. Sure. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so now it's time for, uh, final thoughts. Um, I think this movie is really not good. Like, there's not really anything I can really say, except for the few things I said, that I could say are good. But, I love this movie, and I can't tell you why. I just enjoyed it. I had so much fun watching it, especially the second time I watched it. It was it was a fun time. It's it maybe it's you know I hey I like you know crappy slasher sequels like I get it like that's fair like some people don't like is a movie is it good no but like there was some cool slashery things and like I enjoy that I like you know most of the Friday the Thirteenth films and a lot of them are about this quality of like okay cool stuff's just happening make, the one thing that do, is does as a detriment to this movie was the MPA you know cut it to crap. But I enjoyed most of the characters. Um, I didn't enjoy Ryan, obviously. He was insufferable. And Michelle never gets really a chance to be enjoyable. <laughs> She's just kind of here. But I like the new Sawyer family in quotes, because they don't have a name in this. But I like them. I like pretty much pretty much all of them. I think ha- play their part really well in this movie. Um, I think Ken Foray did a really good job in his role. Um, yeah, the plot's pretty bad. There's not, like, it's one of those movies where, like, I can't tell you why I like it. I just did. I just enjoyed it. Um, it was just, I just had a fun time with it. It is a, it is, though, I will say, it is a bad movie, and I know that. Most people will not like this movie. But, like, let's say you like Friday the 13th Part 7. 
you might like this movie. <laughs> if you like those kind of like later horror sequels, you like the, you know, Halloween f- 4, 5, and 6, you might like this movie. Uh, <laughs> if you like some of those later like slasher sequels, you might like this. I You might not. And that's fair. But I enjoyed it more than I really expected. I expected to kind of hate this movie because, you know, you know, Toby Hooper's not involved. Uh, and, but I didn't. I liked it. It's, you know, is it a good Texas Chainsaw film? Probably not because there really is only one good Texas Chainsaw film of like trying to do what Texas Chainsaw was because the second movie is such a tonal shift. It's different. I don't know. I'm rambling, trying to justify it and come to words with why I like it. I can't. I just like it. <laughs> Not allowed. That's fair. Not allowed to just like things. Yeah. There is, I guess, you must have a thesis. I guess my last like little point on it is, like, it is one of those movies where I like it, but I can completely see why people wouldn't. And I can completely see why all the reasons why someone wouldn't like it. Like, there are some movies where I would defend it till the cows come home that it's just good. Even if people, like, I think it came up last week, Friday the 13th, the reboot. There are fans of that franchise who don't like that movie and I don't get it at all and I would defend it saying that they are wrong that it is a good movie if you like that style of movie this is one that I can't defend it but I like it so <laughs> yeah that's my thoughts Chris I yeah I, I, I did not enjoy this movie very much Although I will say that I enjoyed pretty much every scene that uh, Mr. Foray was in. Um, did eat up his scenes. Uh, and, I mean, I can see why, you know, the test screening people were upset when he died. Although I think, you know, his head being pushed into chainsaw should have killed him. Uh but, you know, just like a lot of the things in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, as far as, you know, continuity sake doesn't really make sense. Uh, you you kind of just learn to accept what you're given uh, and not ask too many questions. Uh, it's a, a fun romp, but definitely uh, that's about it. Um, but even then, not, not all of it is very fun. Uh, but luckily, it is only an hour and what? 21 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. So, they don't, they don't make you sit through too much. Um, which is good because I think if this movie was even like 10 minutes longer, I would have been, um, much more upset about having to watch it. That's pretty funny. Um, I, I agree with a good chunk of that. Uh, namely the summary that it's a fun romp, except for the parts where it's not very fun. <laughs> um, I think more so, though, I t- to not just retrace y'all's steps, I really couldn't get behind the reshaping of the whole story and, and all the characters. Leatherface is so very different for the reasons you've mentioned already. And the implication of the movie, especially with the famous roadkill line and the body pits at the beginning and with the radio story that we hear about them, seems to be, it seems to make like this whole cannibalism phenomenon kind of commonplace in the area and beyond. And the effect of that is a little bit disappointing. It's kind of like if we found out, oh, there's a lake like full of Loch Ness monsters. They're everywhere. You know, all of a sudden, Leatherface isn't this cryptid that a bunch of naive kids stumbled upon. It's like, oh, you, you throw a rock, you're, you're going to hit whole whole tribes of of these cannibals everywhere, right? Just filling body pits with their victims, and they're a known factor. Because they mention in the radio sequence that these happen everywhere. They drive away from that one in the beginning of the movie for, you know, a full day before they arrive at the other family and so this is the implication that this is happening all the time and that's reinforced by the fact that Leatherface has an entirely new family but it's not a remake it's like his cousins 
they have the same grandpa or if they just adopted the grandpa too it's just this town is or this whole region is just full of you know leatherface factories i guess leatherface enablers whatever you want to say i don't know uh and that all like on top of that the worst of all obviously is the total redesigning of leatherface's character they seem to make this paltry effort at uh sympathy for him like we do in the last movies and they they put forth a little more time for that but then they totally just shatter that with his attitude towards the rest of the family um which just makes him two-dimensional and, and monstrous and not a good villain. Not as good of a villain as the previous movies and a very different character. Very different movie. Um, I think it abandons the points the previous movies were trying to make. So for those reasons, I wasn't a fan. I have to admit, though, that it was better done. It looked better. It wasn't this garish 80s nonsense. The last one was like like, yeah. I, it, like, like a Yamaha synthesizer. It was... Like very clean gaudy. dude it just gaudy neon 80s nonsense um and this one was like it was done better and also you pointed out that the character development is really solid and concrete you know we like see her our main character going through these tests that she can eventually pass in the end and um same thing with our side character too so that that's cool that's solid storytelling but um I don't think that nearly out, even comes close to outweighing like the butchering that they do to the rest of the Leatherface saga. So it's completely fair. Like I said, everything you say, I understand completely. I yeah yeah, <laughs> it's fair. I still liked it, <laughs> but you know, everyone's gonna like movies. Some aren't, and that's all good. You know, unless you don't like the movies that I like, and then you're wrong. Uh. <laughs> Except for this one. I, I acknowledge this one is bad. Uh, <laughs> no, this, this one I won't do that for. Uh, there are certain movies that I would do that for. This isn't one of them. Uh, but yeah, um, that has been our review of this movie. Um, well, we will be back next week with a review of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The Next Generation. Which we are they in for are a... not going to be on a starship. No. They're going through space. They are not. Um, uh, the next Spoiler. one is All right. not good, from my understanding. But also, some people love it because it is so weird. Um, let's just say that this movie stars Matthew McConaughey, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, next week we'll be watching that. Uh, but if you like our podcast, uh, leave it a five-star review on any of those audio podcast apps you might be on. You know, your Spotify's, your Apple, your Google we're on all those. Hey, tell a friend, too, if you don't want to leave a five stars. I mean, maybe do both. Um, if you want to help us directly, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash horrorboys, and you can you know give us some money and also get content for it, like ad-free podcasts and podcasts early, like lots of crazy things. It's crazy. It's a good time. You should give us money. Please give us money. Mm. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've been Austin, joined by Chris and Isaiah. We're the Horror Boys, and we'll see you next week. Buh bye bye Bye. Bye.